नमस्कार वेलकम टू द नेक्स्ट चैप्टर इन इंट्रोडक्शन टू माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिजम्स बैक्टीरियोलॉजी मॉड्यूल द नेक्स्ट चैप्टर इंक्लूड्स द प्रोकैरियोटिक और बैक्टीरियल सेल अपेंडेजेस दीज आर द सेलुलर पार्ट्स which are seen in prokaryotic cells or in this case a bacteria as you can see in this image a bacterium does not have any any organelles but it does have many appendages which make up a typical bacterial cell a glycocalyx a nucleoid plasmid pilus ribosomes cytoskeleton flagellum fimbriae and inclusion body cell walls cell membrane outer membrane endospore and cytoplasm these are usually the things that make up this prokaryotic cell the bacterial appendages or usually the prokaryotic cell appendages include external appendages cell envelope and internal appendages the external appendages include flagella pili and fimbriae also it includes glycocalyx like capsule and slime layer while cell envelope includes cell wall and cell membrane internal appendages or internal parts includes cytoplasmic matrix ribosomes inclusion bodies nucleoid actin exoskeleton actin cytoskeleton and endospores so about external appendages external structures the appendages there are two major types of appendages one for motility flagella and axial axial filaments which are periplasmic flagella which are on the outer surface of the cell attachment or channels for transfer of materials which include fimbriae and pili glycocalyx are the surface coatings on the bacteria these make up the capsule or the cellular appendages in a heterogeneous environment many bacteria exhibit taxis or the stimulus induced movement chemotaxis is a movement towards or away from the chemical stimulus in this it can travel up to 50 body 50 body lengths per second which is if you, if we consider human beings it is 190 miles per hour it's an extreme conditions of motility which is not seen in human beings we can't move with that speed flagella apparatus is the one which is responsible for all these things so flagella function includes guide bacteria in a direction in response to external stimulus which include light stimulus a phototaxis or chemical stimulus as said before that is chemotaxis on the basis of flagellar arrangement cells can be monotrichous where a single flagellum at one end is present lophotrichous where a small bunches are arising at the either end of the cell amphitrichous both ends have flagella and peritrichous that is flagella dispersed throughout the cell as you can see in this this is a monotrichous where at the end of a bacterium the flagellum starts next lophotrichous where at the end of the bacterium a, a tuft of flagellum is coming out amphitrichous where at the, both the ends 
there is tufts of flagella and peritricles uh, throughout the bacterial surface flagella are distributed. A, a bacterial flagellum is distributed throughout its cell wall where the rod in the flagellum works as the shaft which with the help of a motor with the help of a flagellar motor and ATP the, rotates the flagellar hook with the filament thus guiding the cell in a particular direction as can be seen in this image the shaft is having the motor that motor helps the turning of the hook or flagellar hook that will in turn turn turns the whole flagellar filamentous apparatus whole thing is situated on the cell wall of the bacterium in this case this example is of a gram negative bacterium as can be seen in this image this is an electron microscopic or an electron micrograph where the same motor and shaft and hook is present in an electron in a flagellar apparatus from this fr through this channel the flagellin proteins are transported outside where they will form the flagellar filament making that in a particular arrangement where the filaments make up the final filamentous flagellum guided by a tip protein and all these filaments will make up the bacterial motor locomotory organ as seen, as seen in this image the bacteria has the ability to move at a very phenomenal speeds because of presence of this flagellum as can be seen in this bacteria these are having the ability to change their direction at will this can be present this can be seen with respect to tumble and run model where tumbling actually is done with the help of the flagellum and hence the whole cell will stop at a particular direction and then it can take a different direction for its motility. With respect to bacterial structures that we have seen in our, in our previous chapter, spirochetes are having special structures of their, on their cell surface. These are having an axial filament and an intracellular flagellum. Thus, the spirochete's motility is completely different from the bacterial motility that we have just seen. As can be seen with respect to prokaryotic flagellum, eukaryotic flagellum is completely different. While prokaryotic flagellum is thin, eukaryotic flagellum is thick and is having a whiplash movement. This is a typical eukaryotic flagellum where the basal body is attached with the microtubules which help the motor to circulate or to move and hence propelling the cell forward. Next is a fimbriae. Fimbriae are fine proteinaceous hair like bristles from the cell surface. These function in addition to other cells and surfaces while pili are rigid tubular structures made up of pilin protein just like in flagellin as seen in the previous video found only in gram negative cells 
function to join bacterial cells for partial DNA transfer called as conjugation about which we will study in later chapters. Pili are also a short protein appendage small, which is extremely small than, smaller than flagella. These adhere bacteria to surfaces. They have the ability to attach bacteria to the, to the surfaces and antibodies also will block these adherences. F. pilus is one of the famous pilus known which is used for conjugation or exchange of genetic information. Pili are also helpful for bacteria in flotation by increasing the buoyancy. These are the ones which are responsible for pellicle formation and the presence of higher oxygen on the surface. As can be seen in this image, the F pili are occupied with respect to their function as genetic transfer in a conjugation. Next appendage is cell wall. Bacterial cell wall is made up of peptidoglycan polymer, peptidoglycan amino acid and sugar based polymer. This is unique to bacteria. It contains sugars like N-acetyl glucosamine and N-acetyl muramic acid. While the amino acids which are used are B forms, not L forms. And hence, it is difficult to break these down. And um, these amino acids cross-link N-acetylglucosamine with N-acetylmuramic acid. As seen in this image. This is the cross-link between N-acetyl glucosamine and N-acetyl muramic acid in a bacterial cell wall, making up the bacterial peptidoglycan layer, also called as murine. As can be seen in this image, each set of muramic acid and glucosamine moiety is synthesized within the cell and then is exported outside into a place where the cell wall is growing or it is a growing part of the cell which needs an ample supply of cell wall and hence it increases the cell surface by increasing the cell wall of the bacterium. This is the crystal structure of the same cell wall that we have just seen. The cell wall also contains ticoic acids. These are typically seen in gram-positive bacteria only and they are containing glycerol, phosphates and ribitol. These are also important sites for attachment of phages or also called as bacterial viruses about which we will study in our last section that is viruses or virology in which we are going to study about bacterial viruses. As discussed just now, bacterial cell wall in gram positive is made up of a cell membrane or a cytoplasmic membrane containing peptidoglycan layer with lipoticoic and ticoic acids in between the peptidoglycan layer. This also contains wall associated proteins. While gram negative bacteria are having an extra outer membrane, while the cytoplasmic membrane is present on the cell membrane on the cell surface or at the periphery of the cell internal, cell internal part. The cytoplasmic membrane is followed by a peptidoglycan layer 
and then a small space of emptiness in which peptidoglycan and other proteins are suspended this is called as a periplasmic space after which there is a secondary membrane called as an outer membrane this outer membrane makes up the bacterial cell wall in gram negative bacteria this mainly contains polysaccharides and lipopolysaccharides and glycolipids and phospholipids these lipopolysaccharides are important because these are also known to be endotoxins in many of the pathogenic organisms or pyrogens thus they are causing fever and they are also present as toxin nomenclature endo part of the bacteria and exo excreted into the environment these are also part of the structure with lipid a and polysaccharides as seen in o antigen of e coli and salmonella that we are serologically checking in vdrl studies and vidal studies g bacteria only they are alcohol and acetone which removes their outer surface polysaccharides make up the major core of the lipopolysaccharides and then there is a lipid a which makes up the long chain fatty acids as seen in this image the bacteria mainly gram negatives are having an extra outer membrane a lipid bilayer with lipopolysaccharides as the major parts of their surface the functions of lipopolysaccharides are they are, they are toxic they kill their host they are also responsible for g septicemia and death due to lipopolysaccharides they work as pyrogens causing fever hence dpt vaccination usually results in fever they are also present as adjuvants and hence they can be used in stimulating immunity they are extremely heat resistant and they are hard to remove hence they are perfect to work as cell surface protectors especially in bacterial cell walls they are best for us human beings to identify the pathogens in our blood and as their antigens lipopolysaccharides in the colonies of bacteria they are present in smooth if the capsule is present they are dry if capsule is absent many of these antigens are responsible for our detection systems for different types of anti antigens and pathogens these gram negative and gram positive we have been discussing gram gram negative and gram positive what are these two okay this is a staining procedure described by hans christian gram a scientist in early 1900 he he utilized the presence of this extra membrane as a way to stain differently of these two types of bacteria the first stain the, that is crystal violet it stains the whole bacterial cell wall if there is only peptidoglycan layer present as seen in gram positives the addition of iodine cements this stain with the peptidoglycan layer with ticoic acid and hence in the next step when alcohol is added a decolorizing agent that is 95% alcohol ethanol is added if the iodine crystal violet complex is not cemented onto peptidoglycan layer 
it will be decolorized it will be removed from the cell surface from the cell wall by decolorizing agent like alcohol thus the bacterium will be transparent again and will not be able to see it hence addition of a secondary strain that is safranin will increase the coloration and differentiate the colorless bacteria with respect to initial crystal violet iodine complex bacteria and hence those bacteria which lose their color after alcohol are called as gram negative while those bacteria which retain their color of crystal violet and iodine after decolorizing agent like alcohol because of the presence of their thick peptidoglycan layer are called as gram positive at the end of the stain gram positive bacteria are seen as purple or take up the crystal violet related stains while gram negative they lose their color of crystal violet and iodine and hence they will take up the secondary stain that is safranin and they will look pink hence you can easily differentiate between purple or blue, or blue colored gram positive bacteria from pink or lightly pink colored or reddish colored gram negative bacteria this is mainly because of the difference in their cell wall as as we just discussed as can be seen in this image the gram positive bacteria are purple or violet or dark blue in color with respect to gram negatives which are reddish or pinkish in color thus when we are discussing about the cell wall or cell membrane of a bacteria they can be further divided on the basis of their presence or absence of cell walls into a unusual cell wall containing archaea thick gram positive cell walls in bacteria mycoplasma which do not have cell wall or thin gram negative cell walls as seen in gram negative bacteria which are having an outer extra outer membrane the next cell membrane the next cell appendage that we are discussing about prokaryotic cell is a cell membrane it is a bilayer phospholipid water can penetrate it it is extremely flexible it is not strong and hence can rupture easily it is completely susceptible to osmotic pressures created by cytoplasm this is the usual lipid bilayer and lipid bilayer is having hydrophilic part outside and hydrophobic part at the center of the bilayer so the next cell appendage that we are discussing is capsule or slime layer the glycocalyx or polysaccharides on external surfaces are one of the major parts of this cell appendage these help the bacteria in adhering to the surface as seen in streptococcus mutans which adhere to our teeth the capsules or slime layer also help the bacterium from preventing phagocytosis because these have the ability to stop a phagocytosing cell from engulfing them these are also responsible for for saving the bacterium from complement fixation system within the immunity of a higher vertebrate glycocalyx is a coating of molecules external to the cell wall made up of sugars and proteins as we discussed it is made up of slime layer of capsule its function is to protect cells from dehydration and nutrition loss it is also helpful in attachment and formation of biofilms as seen in this image 
this is the major difference as seen in this image this is the major difference between a slime layer and a capsule a slime layer is an excessive capsule as can be seen in this image it is a major part of the bacterium for forming an effective biofilm where a single bacterium can attach to the surface to the surface and hence making up a small colony or micro colony and further helping other bacteria to attach and furthering the biofilm next cell and cell appendage that we are discussing is the cell envelope it is an external covering outside the cytoplasm composed of two basic layers cell wall and cell membrane maintain cell integrity bacterial internal structures it includes cell cytoplasm it is a dense gelatinous solution of sugars amino acids and salts it is 70 to 80 percent water and serves as solvent for materials used in a in all cell functions this cytoplasm which is 80 percent water and 20 percent salt proteins it is very important to discuss osmotic shock importance because without osmotic shock there will not be any transport of salts or ATP synthesis within the bacterial cell the bacterial DNA or a prokaryotic DNA is circular and haploid and it is distributed within this part of the cell that is the cytoplasm it is to see that the advantages of 1N or haploid DNA over 2N or diploid DNA is better survivability. They are more efficient and grow quicker and the rampant mutations within these genome allows the adaptation to environment more, more quickly than higher working higher eukaryotes these are also having plasmids or extracircular DNA which contain many genes many traits to be transferred to the two to the new bacteria which includes antibiotic resistance as discussed before the bacterial or a prokaryotic cytoplasm lacks cell bound organelles like mitochondria or Golgi the bacterial internal structure also includes a chromosome which is single circular double standard DNA molecule that contains all the genetic information required by a cell. DNA is tightly coiled around the protein aggregated in a dense area called the nucleoid. Bacterial internal structures also includes plasmids as we discussed just now the small circular double standard DNA. These are free or integrated into the chromosome depending on what kind of plasmids or cosmids they are. These are duplicated and passed on to offsprings. They are not essential to bacterial growth and metabolism usually. They may encode for antibiotic resistance, tolerance to toxic materials, to toxic metals, enzymes and toxins. And these are the ones which, can, which are used in genetic engineering very rampantly in our days. The bacterial internal structures, one of the major internal organs of the bacterial or prokaryotic cell is a ribosome. They make up 60% of ribosomal RNA and 40% of protein. They consist of two subunits, large and small, as you know. And while these two points are similar to eukaryotes they differ from eukaryotes in size and number of proteins the site of protein synthesis and present they are present in all the cells inclusions and granules intercellular storage bodies are the ones which we which we which we are calling as inclusions or granules 
they are they vary in size number and content bacterial cell can use them when environment sources are depleted these are like storage materials for example glycogen polypeptide polypeptide hydroxybutyrate and gas vesicles which can be used for floating for buoyancy maintenance and sulfur and phosphate granules which can be seen in extreme conditions as seen in these pictures there are different inclusions in different types of cells so we come to the next bacterial internal structure which is an endospore what is an endospore it is an inert resting cell that's resting cells produced by the gram positive genera clostridium bacillus and sporosarcina and other species they have two phase life cycle a vegetative cell phase which is metabolically active and growing second is endospore stage when exposed to adverse environmental conditions these are capable of high resistance and very long term survival sporulation is the formation of these endospores these are the hardiest of all the life forms which stand extremes of heat drying freezing radiation and chemicals these are not considered to be means of reproduction as a single cell is produced at the end of each germination the germination of sporulation is return to vegetative growth from sporulation stage as seen in this image this is the sporulation cycle where a cell actively dividing cell in the presence of extreme conditions it starts to produce septa or segmentation within the bacterial cell which is in the which is concurrently continued with in the presence of the duplicated dna or duplicated chromosome and cells are separated into a small four spore and sporangium engulfs the four spore for further development and this four spore will further develop into a specific spore at the end of the system and this can survive for many many years and when the time and conditions are right it can grow again these endospores are resistance linked their resistance is linked to high levels of calcium and dipicolinic acid they are dehydrated and metabolically active inactive they have thick coat their longevity verge verges on immortality that is 25 to 50 million years they are resistant to ordinary cleaning methods and boiling they are presence in presence of 120 degrees celsius that is usual auto cleaving for 20 to 30 minutes is astounding and that is what is needed for removing them from the materials that we want to work with endospores are resistant structures heat irradiation cold everything is nothing to them boiling for more than 1 hour and the spores are still viable takes time and energy to make these spores and location of these spores is very important in classification whether the spores are centrally located subterminally located terminally located depends bacillus cerothermophilus spores are used as bio, bio indicators for heat sterilization equipments bacillus anthracis spores as we know in last few years few years ago that they were they have been used and they are still a threat because they can be used as biological weapons and they are bio warfare agents this is the image of a endospore forming organism where it is divided into spore coat cortex and core
Next section is magnetotactic bacteria. As the name suggests, they are present. They are, they are having a special structure called as magnetosomes. These magnetosomes are magnetic. These are highly useful because they have extreme applications like magnetic separation of materials (MRI). Hyperthermia, microchips, carry, carrier of antibiotics, drugs, etc., robotic technology, eradication of heavy metals from the system, and cancer. So, this chapter ends here.